I was stunned and hurt when I was told abruptly, we don't need you anymore, get out. These harsh words came not just from my sister but were echoed by my parents, making me feel utterly unwelcome in my own family. Saddened by their treatment of both me and my dog as mere annoyances, I resolved to live life on my own terms. My name is Eliana, a 29-year-old single woman. I'm a web analyst, a job that affords me the flexibility to work from anywhere with just a laptop. I cherish this independence and have created a comfortable workspace in my own home. Despite enjoying such a fulfilling career, my peaceful work environment was disrupted three years ago when my parents decided to visit. As they walked into my house, they began to remark on its size and potential for them to move in. My mother casually noted, this house is really big, it seems like we could live here too. My father agreed, suggesting there was even a spare room and that it was wasteful for me to live alone in such a nice place. They concluded without my consent that they would move in that weekend. I was taken aback by their audacity and immediately expressed my objections, stating, wait a minute, I have no intention of living with you guys. My father, red-faced with anger, accused me of taking over the house, which I had actually received from my uncle who favored me. He insinuated that I had maneuvered to claim the property unethically, though in reality, my uncle had simply allowed me to use it as I wished, the truth was, the family home was deteriorating and needed extensive repairs that were unaffordable on my father's modest salary. This financial strain led them to fixate on my house as a new residence. They had already decided to sell their place, assuming they had no other options. Despite their plans, I was determined not to let them force me out of my own space, setting the stage for a significant conflict about boundaries and independence within our family, feeling a sense of obligation, I couldn't just abandon my parents. With mixed feelings, I agreed to let them move in with me. However, as soon as they settled in, the atmosphere became tense with their constant critical remarks. Eliana, you're already over 27, aren't you? Don't you have any plans of getting married, my mother would often sneer. I'm currently focused on my career, I would respond, trying to keep the peace, yet their comments persisted, keep talking like that, and you'll never get married. Why don't you try to be more like your sister? Their references to my sister, who was married but not exactly thriving in her relationship, only added to the tension. I'm perfectly fine as I am, I'd retort, but that didn't stop my mother from interrupting. Don't speak ill of your sister like that. Unlike you, she's married and works for a company, she chided. I might not be married, but I'm successfully self-employed, I defended myself, growing tired of their narrow views. I'm not just playing around on my computer. I earn my income through legitimate, hard work. How dare you talk back to your mother? You really are the complete opposite of your sister, my father would join in, shaking his head in disapproval, this was the norm in our household my parents constantly comparing me unfavorably to my sister. While she had a traditional office job, albeit a temporary one, I was actually doing quite well financially with my freelance career. It seemed my parents, from an older generation, couldn't quite understand or value the concept of working from home. Then, one day, as I was preparing dinner in place of my often unhelpful parents, the doorbell rang unexpectedly. It was my sister, Victoria, standing there with a mountain of luggage. Victoria, what's going on? I asked, surprised by her sudden appearance. Long time no see, Eliana. This is sudden, but I'll be living here from today, she announced, leaving me speechless. Huh? What a large house. If uncle was going to give it to someone, he should have given it to me, she continued, staking her claim without prior discussion. Whoa, hold on. Living here from today? I didn't hear anything about this, I responded, completely taken aback. Didn't mom and dad tell you? I got divorced. So, I'll be counting on you from today, she explained, expecting immediate acceptance. This unexpected turn of events added another layer of complexity to my already strained family dynamics forcing me to navigate these challenging relationships while trying to maintain my own peace and autonomy in the home that was meant to be my sanctuary. Despite my reservations, my sister Victoria brazenly marched upstairs and claimed an empty room as her own, 
with our parents' full support. My protests fell on deaf ears, it seemed nothing I said would change their minds. From then on, my stress levels began to soar, since her divorce, Victoria had left her job and spent her days gossiping with our mother, often at my expense. Hey mom, isn't this dress cute, she would ask, holding up a flashy new outfit. Oh yes indeed, Victoria. You're so pretty, it will definitely suit you, mom would reply, admiringly. Do you think so too? It's totally not something Eliana would wear, right? Victoria would add, poking fun at my simpler style. Well, Eliana is a bit plain, you see. That's why she can't get hired anywhere. All she can do is play online at home, mom would say, not bothering to lower her voice, standing nearby as I prepared dinner, I could hear every word. I longed to respond, to defend myself, but I knew that reacting would only delight them. So, I chose to keep silent, not giving them the satisfaction they sought then. One day, a friend of mine announced that her dog had a litter of four puppies. I decided to adopt one, a decision that brought a spark of joy into my routine. The puppy was a little black chihuahua with the most endearing round eyes and an enthusiastic tail wag that seemed it might snap from excitement. I named him Coco, having a chihuahua had been a childhood dream of mine. Working from home can be isolating, and I thought Coco would provide some much-needed companionship. From today onwards, you're Coco, okay? I told him as he responded with a cheerful woof. I didn't consult my family about adopting Coco, considering this was still my house and I would be bearing all his expenses. I saw no need for their approval or input on the matter. When I brought Coco home, as expected, the complaints started immediately from both my parents and Victoria. Hey, we didn't hear anything about you getting a dog, they protested. Exactly, dogs smell, don't they? I hate odors, Victoria chimed in. Eliana, how could you just bring a dog home without consulting us? We didn't approve of this, they added, bombarding me with disapproval. I met their barrage of complaints with calm but firm resistance. Firstly, I didn't pick him up off the street, a friend gave him to me. Also, I'm the one who's going to bear all the expenses for Coco, so there shouldn't be any issue. What I choose to keep in my house is my business. If you have any complaints, you're free to leave, I declared, standing my ground in the home that was rightfully mine. Initially, my family was furious about Coco's arrival, their faces red with anger. However, within just a few hours, they were completely charmed by his adorable antics. Aren't you the cutest? Are you mommy's boy? Or daddy's? Or are you sissy's little pup? Look over here, sweetheart, they cooed. Their sudden shift from rage to affection made me wonder if their initial anger was just a fleeting illusion. Coco quickly became the center of attention in our household. His presence somehow softened their usual harshness towards me, and life at home became more bearable. We enjoyed a period of relative peace, all thanks to Coco's undeniable cuteness, however, this tranquility was shattered one day when I was out running errands. My phone rang, it was Victoria, sounding frantic. Hello, come back home now. Confused by her urgent tone, I asked, what happened? It's not about what happened, it's Coco. He did his business on my clothes. What if they smell, she yelled back, I tried to remain calm and practical. Oh, just wash them quickly and they'll be fine. Besides, isn't it your fault for leaving your clothes all over the floor? What? My fault? It's your poor training that's to blame, she accused. Enough, Victoria. Coco is still a puppy, you know. If you take him out for a walk, he won't do his business indoors. Weren't you excited to walk him today? Did you actually take him out? Well, I... I was going to take him later. And it's all because you didn't teach him properly. You need to pay me for the clothes, she retorted when I returned home, the situation had escalated. Victoria was visibly upset, and my parents were standing beside her, glaring at me. Victoria threw the soiled clothes at me and started ranting again. I'm going to charge you for the cleaning cost, okay? Why should I pay? 
It's because you didn't take him for a walk and left your clothes on the floor, I replied, trying to hold my ground. Shut up. Don't talk back. It's because you brought this stupid dog home that this happened. What are you going to do about it, she continued angrily. Stupid dog? Weren't you quite fond of him before? Isn't it harsh to call him stupid just because he had an accident? I pointed out, hoping to remind her of the affection she had shown Coco just days before, after Coco's little accident, the tension in the house escalated quickly. Victoria, irate, pointed at me and said, it's because of your poor training. Take responsibility. I was dismayed by how quickly my family resorted to self-interest. As I struggled to comprehend my sister's selfishness, my parents joined in. Eliana, shouldn't you at least apologize to Victoria first? That's right, all of this happened because of that cocoa you brought home, they added. Exasperated, I replied, can both of you give it a rest already? Puppies are like babies, can't you forgive them for making a mistake once in a while? But Victoria retorted, pathetic. This situation only happened because of this stupid dog. Eliana, you made the right choice by not getting married. If you became a mother, I doubt you'd raise a decent child. Shocked, I countered, how dare you say something like that? If you took him for walks properly and kept the house tidy, none of this would have happened. But Victoria was relentless. She raised her eyebrow, pointed at me, and declared, I can't take it anymore. I don't need you or this dumb dog. Get out of this house. What? Didn't you hear me? I said get out. We don't need a homeworking freeloader here, she sneered. A homeworking freeloader? How can someone who's currently jobless say such a thing? And who do you think is paying for this household's expenses? It's me. I retorted, my frustration peaking. Even then, my parents sided with her. That's right, Eliana. Leave this house. Your presence only makes us feel worse. You're a jinx. They kept repeating get out in front of me. At that moment, my anger boiled over. That's it. I've reached my limit. If this is how it's going to be, just wait. Having decided that enough was enough, I packed my things and left the house with Coco, determined to take a stand. As I left, Victoria added more fuel to the fire, this is all your fault, you know. If you had just listened to me obediently, none of this would have happened. They still didn't seem to understand their situation, even though trouble was brewing for them. Well, never mind. You three enjoy yourselves in the house, I said, suppressing a grin as I walked away with Coco Dot a few days later, as expected, Victoria called in a panic. Eliana, help. The house, what happened to the house all of a sudden? I asked, curious despite myself. We were told to leave by the end of this month. Hmm, so what? What's the problem? I asked nonchalantly. What do you mean, what's the problem? Why do we have to leave, she replied, clearly bewildered and distressed, their predicament didn't surprise me, but I chose to wait and see how they would handle it without me. They had pushed me too far, and now, they needed to understand the consequences of their actions on their own, when I declared my intention to sell the house, Victoria seemed to freeze. Her voice quivered as she stammered, what? What does that mean? You've decided to sell it? You don't have the authority. But I do, I responded calmly. You see, the house was officially transferred to me by our uncle a month ago. The title is in my name. Victoria was clearly shocked. I hadn't mentioned the transfer to anyone before. You're. You're kidding, right? Even if the title was transferred to you by uncle, you can't just sell it so easily, she argued. I was worried too, but right after you told me to leave, I consulted with uncle. He said the house is yours now, Eliana. Do what you want. You should get away from that toxic family as soon as possible, I explained. What? No way, she exclaimed, disbelief coloring her voice. Whether or not they had been eavesdropping on my conversation with Victoria, my parents quickly joined in the chaos over the phone. 
Hey, Eliana, cut it out. We have no other place to live if we leave the house, my father pleaded. That's right. It's unthinkable to do this to your own family. If you're a good daughter, show some respect to your parents, my mother chimed in. Respect? I asked quietly, my voice laced with disbelief. What are you talking about? You've always looked down on me compared to Victoria. Who do you think has been supporting your lives for the past few years? You all had nowhere to live, so I reluctantly let you stay with me. My parents fell silent, taken aback by my unusually firm tone. I didn't wait for them to recover. Who treated me and Coco like nuisances and kicked us out? It was you, wasn't it? Trying to be happy by driving out the original resident is shameless. You people don't understand the gravity of your actions, I continued, my words heavy with emotion. At my outburst, my father began to plead, please help us, we're sorry. Their pleas, however, fell on deaf ears this time. I had reached my limit. They had repeatedly taken my generosity for granted, and now, as they faced the consequences of their actions, they finally seemed to realize the seriousness of the situation. But for me, it was too little, too late. I was determined to move forward with my life, free from their toxic influence. I don't care, fend for yourselves, I said firmly, my voice resolute over the phone before ending the call with a definitive click. Immediately afterward, I took the step to block the contacts of each family member. As I did this, Coco sensed the tension and gave a concerned woof. I scooped him up into a gentle embrace. I'm sorry for shouting, Coco. It's all right now. I will protect you, I whispered, reassuring both him and myself. It felt like a significant moment, distancing ourselves from a family that had not only mistreated me but also failed to appreciate Coco's sweet nature, and the days that followed, I heard that my parents and sister were scrambling to vacate the house as the deadline approached. Given my father's modest income and the fact that both my mother and sister were unemployed, they were facing a stark reality. Rumors reached me that Victoria was now under constant pressure from our parents to find work, and their family dynamics were deteriorating day by day, though I had no desire to delve into their struggles, it was clear their quality of life had taken a dive without my financial support. It was a classic case of reaping what one sows, and in their case it seemed justly deserved, meanwhile, Coco and I began a new chapter in a pet-friendly apartment, a place where I could work in peace and he could enjoy his days without stress. Here, I had the freedom to manage my time and earnings however I saw fit, without interference or unwarranted criticism. Life had become markedly better. Coco, let's go to the dog park today, I suggested cheerily, watching his tail wag energetically in response, with the absence of the constant family drama, Coco appeared more spirited, and I felt a profound sense of relief. From now on, my priority was to protect Coco and ensure our lives remained peaceful and fulfilling. Together, we were set on enjoying each moment, free from the chaos of the past. 